Welcome to Pod Nuts Daily for January 9th, 2008, episode number 134. Don't know if you guys ever worked on a Dell Optiplex GX270 before. Small form factor model. It's the one in a kind of little round, um, what do they call that? Eye drop, um, hourglass shape. They have, a, they have a funny name for it. Um, these are famous for motherboards getting fried. We had one that came in. It was running slow. Customer said it would crash and it would also give him virtual memory errors, running low on virtual memory. So we're like, he probably just has some kind of operating system problem where he doesn't have enough RAM. So we went in there and we, we looked at he's got plenty of RAM and his processor was fast enough. Yet sometimes the computer would just kind of act funny as far as um, things would go slow or wouldn't do things properly. If you go into the task manager, the processor was not maxing out, not even close, and he had plenty of extra memory. So, well, we went ahead and, and upgraded the processor and memory anyway, and it speeded it up. But the thing was, it started blue screening after that. Well, we opened up the machine, and we found that, like, what I normally find on this GX270. And we, I should have checked this as one of the earlier things that could have been wrong with, with this computer. Capacitors are blown and motherboards fried. It was a huge problem with this model. I even had this model, and it happened to me. Um, capacitors start to like uh, pop on up on open on top, and a brown goo kind of just spills out. That is what happened with this, like on five capacitors on the thing. Um, so we're going to need to replace the motherboard on that. But that's what was causing that problem: bad capacitors. Keep an eye out if you have a GX270 Optiplex, and they were pretty popular, or that particular model with that form factor, and they it's acting crazy on you. Check the motherboard capacitors; it might be the problem right there. Um, I had one computer today. It was a real shame. I hate when this happens. A customer had like a, a year gate old gateway. I mean, it was like 13 months old gateway laptop, just out of warranty by a month. And I don't know about you guys, but computers that come to me in the worst possible condition are either from teenage girls or girls in college. I don't know what they do to their laptops, but they really, <laughs> they beat these things up, man. Um, this one in particular was uh, from girl in college. Now, here's what I think happens. I think I, I think um, they put their laptops like they use the laptops on their bed. And when you use a laptop on your bed, it it has a problem with the ventilation, and it pull, tends to pull up a lot of lint and dust and that kind of thing out of the like the bed sheets or the comforter, and it clogs the the heat sink where your flow is supposed to be for the fan. And computer overheats, and if it does it enough times and runs hot long enough, it's going to fry the motherboard. Um, these chips are programmed to turn off after a certain temperature, but if you're riding right on the edge and it's just running hot all the time, eventually it's going to do long-term damage to the machine. And that is what happened after, uh, as I took a look at this one. And my estimation, I can't be 100% sure, but there was so much dust in this particular machine. It would pow It powers on. The fan tries to spin. I mean, I finally got to start spinning, and but nothing else happens. No picture on the screen, no hard drive activity. Usually means if there's a lot of dust in there and you're able to suck all a lot of the lint and dust out and the computer is acting that way, it's a motherboard problem. But just to make sure, I pulled out a lot of the things that were connected to the computer, replaced the RAM, pulled out the hard drive. Um, I didn't pull out the wireless card, actually. But um, what else can we do? That's not one of the main things. You know, pull out all, as many components off the motherboard as you can just to make sure it's not any of those components, and then you'll see it's a motherboard. It kind of – I didn't realize it at first, and then I took it outside and blew all the dust out, and that's when I realized that it has to be an overheat error because so much dust came out of that thing. It was a shame. Anyway, it's a shame. 13-month-old computer. Now they have to buy a new one or get the motherboard replaced. Um, you guys probably know about this site already, but I just f found it out for the first time today. Uh, let me Google that for you dot com. What a, what a hilarious site. <laughs> I hope my dad's not watching because I'm going to be using this site with him in the, in the shop every time he asks me a question. And um, it's basically a site that – let me Google that for you, dot com. It, you, you type a – go to that site. You type a Google query, and then it gives you a URL based on that query. Say, so say somebody asks you, how do I do this? How, let's give an example, a specific example. How do I, um, how do I add more RAM to my computer? I don't know how to add more RAM, and they're just getting on your nerves. 
you send them a link. Says here's how you do it. You send them this link. This is the solution. It's and you go to let me Google that for you. And you type in like let's just say installing RAM into a laptop. And you type that in. Let me Google that for you. It gives you a link. And then you send that link to whoever's asking you the question. In that link, when you click on it, it runs a script where it takes the cursor really slow and it brings, it brings up a Google window and it brings the cursor right into the search part of the Google window. And then it types in that Google window how to up, how to, ins how to install RAM in a laptop. Then it clicks the search button and the whole time it's giving you little signs that are saying, now wasn't that easy? This is all you have to do. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Check it out. It's um, if somebody keeps asking you questions, it's a great site to refer, a great way to like provide answers for them. I think eventually they'll get the, they'll get the hint. But not that my dad asks me a lot of dumb questions at the shop. It's just um, I'm just going to use this just as a joke with him. <laughs> All right, tell people. Okay, here's another semi, uh, I don't know, kind of crazy thing. A lot of times a customer will come in, not a lot, but sometimes customers will come in. And after we fix some, a, a virus problem for them or um, remove spyware off the machine, they'll say, well, how'd you do it? And, you know, most of the time I'll say, well, we, we uh, just cleaned it and optimized it for you. I won't give away all of our trade secrets. Um, but in, in a special particular case, if a customer's particularly annoying, um, I will tell them everything that they need to know in hope that they don't come back again. <laughs> oh, that happened um, this week. A customer came in. He's not one of my favorite customers. And we clean up his machine. He's like, how did you do that? What did you do? And I go, well, here's exactly what we did. And I made a little list for him. I go, if it ever happens again, here, just follow these instructions. <laughs> and uh, hopefully we won't see him again. Anyway, did a, uh, yesterday I talked about doing a manual restore of your registry. If, if you can't get into the operating system and system and you want to do a system restore, a uh, manual system restore. We've been using that this week probably like three times with great success. And if you want to know how to fix, do a system restore on a machine where you can't actually load Windows, then listen to yesterday's episode. Um, I don't have it posted yet, but we'll get to that later. You can do, find it at the Ustream, Podnuts Daily Ustream uh, video. You can't get the audio yet. I haven't posted it yet. Uh, that's pretty much, it, pretty much it for the shop. Let me uh, read some emails here. There's no voicemails. Read some emails, and I'm going to end off for today. Ray says, "Stay, Ray. I don't know if we want, you want me to read this, but I want—I actually want to read it because it gives—it's something that I didn't even know. But it's about routers." He says, "Hey, Steve. I hate to bring this up again, but I listened to one of Leo's podcasts, and one of the guests spoke about it being harder to find free internet because of locked routers, not key encrypted, locked. That is what I spoke." to you about in two of my recent emails. When you use the factory software that comes with a router, it locks the router so that even with encryption, the router will not allow access unless you 